Hello and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract and we're here in the Zim site zimjs.com where our latest version is Zimcat. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but you can open up the cat here, boop, like so, and see all of the latest things that are available in Zimcat. That was making mobile apps in five minutes with a tool called Zaps. This is a way to set up custom easing. Here is examples of those custom e easings. <laughs> Click. Here we go. Eee! Isn't that fun? This one's called Snap up there. And this one is a ballistic. And there's another one that uh, zoops in called Slow Mo. So we can do animation. And these are new easing uh, equations that we've added, as well as the ability to make your own custom easing equations. Super. Uh, there's new keyboards for all, well, we had keyboards for a while. This is the Zim keyboard right here, but now we have them in different languages as well. How exciting. Neat, huh? Different arrangements. And yeah, we can type letters in there. Cool. And there's dozens. That's effects and layout. There's a survey that we did. Here's the book. The Zim book is really neat. And check out the front of the YouTube. Uh, video area to see uh, Zim story, which is all uh, code in a that reads like a book. It's so so cute. Ah, do you want to see it? Anyway, this goes on 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 etc. Also back at the front here, there's a certificate, which is a fun way to explore uh, Zim. These are all the components in here to organize this. That's not a toggle. The toggle is right here. This is a toggle. And this one's a selector right here. That's a selector. This is a, a slider and a dial. So we got the mixed up slider, dial, toggle. And the indicator is that one. And the bottom one is tabs. These are tabs. And we hit test. Yay, we got it correct. How about you? Could you have done that? <laughs> and this is with a, oh, what do we call that one again? Scrambler. So that's a Zim Scrambler. There's another example of a Scrambler here. This is a Zim List, so we can make lists like that. There's been, oops, there's been 10 versions right there. Uh, mind you, as, as we go, we need to do the test on that so that it keeps track of them. Uh, this one is also a Scrambler. We would make a new circle, and then we say dot drag. So new circle dot drag, and then we'll be able to drag on a, a circle transforms and uh, oh here are these that this is a, a squiggle oh <laughs> I told you a wobble a doodle a squiggle and this one is called a blob these are those two shapes that I mentioned in the past one that are sort of um, well more organic shapes and you can even add so I've just clicked on there you can add um, uh, Bezier points as well and remove them by shift clicking or clicking and holding. You can also change the points. So if I double click here, now it, it won't be even. So I can make this one really long. If I double click again, they go yellow and I can make it pointy like that. Uh, if I double click again, then it becomes just a single point. So indeed, double clicking these a bunch of times and you could even make a uh, polygon type shapes. There we are. Like so. And once again, adding shapes as well in there. So that one's called a blob. Uh, this is a stepper right here. So this is a fun way to test your knowledge on Zim as well, uh, to get a certificate in the end. And that uh, might be fun for you. All right, so that's the, the Zim cat. So once again, if I refresh the page here, note the cat opens up. You open it up and you can see all of the new things. What were we going to take a look at? Oh yes, the book example on the YouTube site. So here's YouTube vids. And then this one right here has uh, regular parameters <laughs> where we don't specify the name. We just put them in order. So we call ah, that actually duo technique. 
And that make... would be a great place to go in and check out some code, the Zim Duo technique. We can make parameters in, in a regular way, or we can pass them in in these squiggly brackets that we call a configuration object. So why don't we just go right into code and take a look there. However, this is the Zim book and you can page through it. Uh, that was the intro video. You. We would love it if you came here. How do I escape out of this? We would love it if you came here, uh, clicked on this. Right, uh, from the front, you can only view it, but it would be nice if you actually see Object. it inside here we call and this give us Zim a thumb technique. up because that we... would be that would be handy if indeed you like the video. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look at that though. When Well, it's on CodePen, so I'm gonna look in, on CodePen here. There's a couple different places we can find it, but here's CodePen. So if you come into CodePen right here, uh, we should probably view it, not in an edit. Well, an editor would be fine. This in CodePen, you can find out how we made the code there it is, so that's handy uh, in the change view. Here is the code pen, well, in a full view, not quite full screen, but full enough for us, and hit view. So this is the Zim story. It's in a Zim book, which allows you to pick up these pages and turn them. And it's showing you how Zim is so simple, it reads like a book. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And look at these pages. Ready? Watch. There's the emitter. Right there, still showing on the page. Isn't that cool? Um, we're going to talk about the duo technique, which is in there. And here is a color picker, one of the components where we can change color. Oh my goodness, that's some color. And what's called a tile using a series. This is another version of the scrambler where you can make a, uh, a puzzle. Mm, shall we solve it? I did it! Yay! Neat. And uh, you can tell there's an event when it's solved. You can tell uh, here we didn't bother adding the event. We can drag along one of those squiggles and blobs. And remember? So if I pick that up, oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? And there's the code over here to do that. This is the Zim pen. And sound. Oh, I don't have my desktop uh, audio put into here. Oh, darn, we have no audio coming through. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, aside from my, my, my talking audio. Uh, I, I got to get off this page, so I'll go back to the start here. Uh, you can also use arrows to go through this in book. Um, I just realized I had shown you the the YouTube video and it didn't have its audio turned on, which was too bad. Okay, let's go in then and take a look at these things called configuration objects uh, in the Zim Duo technique, we call it. In the past videos, we showed you what this code was all about. We made this code together. You can get the, the template to start coding in the Zim code page. So check out the earlier videos if you want to see how to do that. And now here we are inside. And let's see, what should we start in on? Why don't we make a rectangle? Uh, we made an icon. Good. Um, and then just down here, we'll make a rectangle. New rectangle. And we'll make it one, how about 200 by 200, and we will make it purple. Okay, so we've just added parameters to a rectangle. We should add this to the stage somewhere. We'll center it, I suppose. There it is. And refresh here. So now we have a purple rectangle on the stage. What if we wanted to make the corners of the rectangle have uh, rounded? So we can do that. That's a parameter a little bit later on. We have to get past the border color. So if we don't want to enter a border color, we can put null or in ES6, we usually use undefined there. I'm so used to using null and then ES6 came along and said, null won't work. <laughs> this is, <coughs> excuse me, 
Let me try some water here. There we go. This is when you want to just use the default. So the default is no border. I just want to change the colors or the corners. I don't want to change the border. So I can pass in null there. The spaces don't matter here. Now the next parameter is the border width and I can pass in null there too. So you have to do that. The, the one after this is the corner and so I can go 40. And we save that and refresh here. And now there's a 40 pixel radius here on the corners of our rectangle. And it's a little bit annoying uh, having to fill in these empty spots. So we can't just do that. It won't work because then it would think that we're passing in 40 for the border color and probably would just make us a black border. I don't know. Yeah, so it, it 40 is treated as a, as a color or like colors are numbers. So 40 is actually a very dark number. And there it is. That's the default. Uh, well, pretty well black. <clears throat> the next one is, you know, three. So now or, or something like that. We made that a little bit bigger. If we said 30, now we would have a uh, 30 pixel border. OK, well, we don't want to put anything in there. We want a 40 pixel. So null comma null. We want no border color and no border width and then 40 pixels. Uh, a button, for instance, has something like, I don't know, 40 or 50 parameters. We don't want to have to go null, 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 null to get to some parameter way down the line. That would be just unmanageable. And in Zim 2, which was called Zim Duo, we realized that. And so we uh, introduced what's called the Zim Duo technique. We're going to do the same thing as this, but with the Zim Duo technique here now. So we go new rectangle like that. Then we specify a width. So we, we start these squiggly, we start these squiggly brackets right here, squiggly brackets. It's called an object literal. And we say width colon 200. So then we put the name of the parameter followed by a colon and its value. And we put a comma, comma height is 200, comma uh, color is purple, comma, corner is 40. There we go. And we will dot loc that at 100, comma, 100. And we refresh here. And there we have the same, the same rectangle. In this case, I suppose we could see that it's a little bit longer to use the Zim Duo technique there with height and width. But say we had default sizes like null and null there. We could then get rid of those. And now it's a little bit shorter. So we went directly to the color. And if we didn't care about the color purple, you would be doing this up here. Null, 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 until you finally got to 40 for the thing. And down below, we just go directly to the corner. And here's what we've got now. We've got two little rectangles. <laughs> They're almost circles now, aren't they? Two little rectangles. That's the default size of a, of a rectangle. Uh, and uh, maybe we should reduce that a little bit so that the corner stays uh, more of a corner. There you go. Of course, if the default corner is 50, uh, is that how it works? So what would we, no, default, um, sorry, default, side of a rectangle is 100. So we'd have to go to 50. If we set a corner of 50 there, this one of these will look like a circle. <laughs> That's a rectangle, 100 by 100, with a corner of 50 radius, and it turns it into a circle. Funny, you can even go more than that if you want, and then it starts taking on a kind of a strange shape. Uh, why don't we do 100, and you can see what I mean there. It kind of... <laughs> <laughs> flips right around. So we have a corner of 100, this corner right here, and it makes this strange looking shape. Interesting, huh? Anyway, back to, well, we had the other one was 20. So uh, back to our Zim Duo technique, we can specify parameters in order, or we can specify a single parameter that is a 
uh, object literal. Um, th that's a JavaScript uh, basic mm, uh, data construct, I guess. We have arrays, which are lists, and we have object literals, which are lists of properties and values. And so uh, it doesn't matter the order either. We could have said corner uh, color, color, colon, red there. And we, we put the color after the corner. Uh, that's the wrong parameter order. But sure enough, that still works. So the order then doesn't matter. The only thing is we have to know what the parameters are called. So that's sometimes that's easier to remember, though, than the order of things. Like I sometimes don't remember which order these parameters are in. But I'll almost always remember what the parameter name is called. We've used it over and over again. So it's up to you. You can use either one, uh, whichever one is easier for you. And that's what we do. We swap between them. Uh, why don't we take a look at an, an animation example so that we can see a bit of animation as well. And in animating, we often use the ZimDuo technique as well. So we'll animate our rectangle. How about uh, we'll... I don't know, it's not a very exciting rectangle at the moment, is not is it? So we'll go 200 here, 200 here, and this is the color. We'll keep that at purple. We'll keep the null, null, and 20, that's fine. And I'm not going to bother using this one right here, so we'll comment it out. So dot center and dot animate, dot animate. So animation happens with the, the round brackets. I'm not sure what happens if we animate and don't put anything in the animation, just nothing. Now let's bring that up again to something like 40 on the corner. So there we have our rectangle sitting there in the middle. We're, we didn't really do anything in the animate, so it's, it hasn't given us anything. And now we have a choice. We can animate with regular parameters, which go pretty well if we want just a basic animation. Say we wanted to animate this rectangle so that it fades in. Well, we would start it with, this is one way of doing it, an alpha of zero. So that means we won't see it. You ready? We don't see it. It has an alpha of zero. And what we want to animate is the alpha to one. And we can specify how long as well. By default, it will be one second. Well, uh, let's put in that time, time of one second. So there it is. If we want a time of 10 seconds, here it is fading in slowly, very slowly now over 10 seconds. And it's getting there, and now it's purple. <laughs> okay, um, the next parameter is the the type of easing that we want to use. And then there's uh, what function do we want to call when it's finished? That's called a callback function. And then there's what parameters are we going to send to the callback function? And then there's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, because I can't remember them anymore. Why don't we go take a look? So here's the Zim site. On the Zim site, you can press the docs here and then search an -im. I'm just typing anim. I'm not even doing animate. And here is Zim animate. So those are the parameters, the props, the time, the easing, the call, the params. Oh, how long do we want to wait? What uh, function do we want to call once we finish waiting? What parameters do we pass? Do we want to loop? Yeah, so say we wanted to loop this. Maybe we'll scale it bigger, and then we want to scale it smaller. If we wanted to get to loop, we'd have to put nulls in front of all of these and finally get to loop. And then if we wanted to rewind, it would be null, 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 rewind. So you can imagine that's not very fun to do, which means most likely we would just start right off with the Zim Duo technique and use the or the, the second one of that, which is the configuration object or the object literal. So an object literal is a JavaScript construct. It just looks like this. It means give me an empty object. This is an empty object. There it is. And we can assign it to a variable. Const obj is equal to that, like that. And then we can put properties in it, age 10, like so. And if we wanted to, uh, Zim has this thing called Zog. It's a short form for console.log, which is long. And Zog is short. So we can log to the console what the obj.age is, 
or we can deed zog to the console what the obj dot age is. Remember, the dot syntax is how we can access the property or run a method. Here's running a method, here's accessing a property. So we're going to zog that in both cases and we refresh here and run it. And then this is where you access the console. And there it is, 10 and 10. Boop, like that. So that's an object literal. If you want to do multiple properties, you can specify another property. Um, <laughs> gender. <laughs> I was trying to figure out which one's better to do here, color or gender. It's like, oh God, I'm gonna run into problems no matter what we do. Uh, I happen to uh, identify as male, as maid. I'm maid. <laughs> Somebody made me. Anyway, uh, there's two properties now with their values. Uh, and therefore, we could zog the gender. By the way, zog's kind of fun. It, it can be odd. Like, I, I don't know. Was it odd when you looked at Zim and I, I mean, maybe you, up here you saw the fact that we are we zogging? No, I didn't, we didn't zog. I took that out of the template. That's right. And we used to have in the template zog high from frame or something like that. And I, I don't know if people would look at that and go, I don't know what zog is. And the more they see that they don't know what it is, the more they kind of get scared about it. There's nothing, nothing to be scared about uh, Zog. It's a short form for console.log, so we don't have to type console.log. And it's a Zim wrapper that does that. What's neat about it as well is you can Zog different colors. So here's Zogging Red, and, and that would make a little red a Zim icon next to what you're Zogging. Here's Zogging Blue, here's Zogging Yellow, here's Zogging Orange, etc. Green, double. G. And that um, is handy when you've got a bunch of uh, logging to do in the console and you want a, a quick visual indication. So why don't we check that out? I'll zog R for red. I'm going to open this up in a browser. The browser console is a little bit nicer to look at. F12. So F12 for the browser console and I can expand the browser console to be bigger where that other in app or whatever it is, browser plus uh, console doesn't allow us to do that. So there it is. There's 10. It tells us line 38. And there's uh, a red Z next to our other 10, which tells us 39. So that's handy when you've got a lot of things to zog. It can be nice to have this sort of color coded. You, oh, we do have a, a Zim frame being zogged as well. If you want to turn off all consoles, you can go zon equals false. Uh, ahead of time and it will just turn off all of the console output so you don't see anything just so you know this is a zim basics and we're just kind of like blah bitty blah bitty blah bitty about whatever kind of comes into mind as we're coding here i hope you don't mind that means we go off on some tangents such as this tangent <laughs> oh no it's a meta tangent oh yeah it's a, oh meta 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 uh, on to infinity all right, so uh, if you're still with us, <laughs> hopefully you are, that's a little bit about uh, zogging and consoling and a little bit about object literal, All right, Just to, it is a JavaScript construct and what we're using it for is to pass properties in as parameters. Uh, well, actually not in this case. So in this case, it's a bit tricky because the first parameter is what properties do we want to change? Well, we want to change the alpha. Say we want to change the scale two, we could go scale colon two. <laughs> I meant scale two as in as well, T-O-O. But uh, in this case, um, we're going to double the size of it as well. And we refresh here. Now, oh, right, we got a 10 minute. So over 10 minutes, it's going to scale in. And there's just a little bit something funny about that scaling in. Did you, did you see that? It's not right what I expected. And let's also change the time of this to more like maybe a two second scaling. So that's a two second uh, fading and scaling. There it is. Not very nice because it's scaling from its registration point of the top left corner. And we talked about this in the last Zim Basics. The solution is center reg that, right like that. And now when we refresh, it scales in from the center of the object, which is much nicer. Still a bit slow. Oh, one second. Whoop. 
or even 0.7 seconds is fine. Uh, Zim, by the way, uh, Zim Cat is in seconds. All the versions of Zim before Cat were in milliseconds. So we refresh here and there's a 0.7 seconds. So now we're in seconds here for the amount of time as opposed to milliseconds. If that really bothers you, you can, uh, up above here somewhere, probably at the start of your code, say time equals milliseconds. And then it will all go back to milliseconds. So that will affect things like intervals and timeouts and uh, you know, any, anywhere we've got time will now be in milliseconds. Okay. Um, down below here. So this is a simple animation where we're just saying what properties we want to animate and in how long. But now if we wanted to rewind that so that it goes back smaller, as a matter of fact, I, I don't want to fade in the alpha, I'll just do the scale. So ready, there we go. And then we can just have this rewind back and forth. If we want to get to rewind, or loop and rewind, we'd have to do the, all that bunch of nulls, 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 which like I said, we definitely would not do. So now we go to the duo technique. And this is tricky because we've already got an object literal in here that is responsible for saying what properties we want to animate. So we're gonna end up with nested object literals. So a way that we can convert is select all the stuff in there and put two squiggly brackets. That makes our object literal around the outside for us. If we want, we, we can say props here, because that's what the, the name of the parameter is. It's called props. And this name right here is called time. So we can do it like that. That would be fine. But uh, what I often do is just drop it down like this. And I say props, colon. And then here I drop it down and I say time, colon. And then this one drops down to the end there. And it shows us this nice sort of like a basket almost. Uh, squiggly brackets are a box. Any brackets are like a box. And so here we are, we made a box and these are the things that we're putting in there. So props will have the scale of two and the time is 0.7. Then we go comma and we say, yes, please loop that loop colon true. Here's what it would look like if we just loop that it might not look exactly like what you want or what you expect. You ready? Gets bigger, gets bigger, gets bigger, gets bigger. <laughs> so maybe rewind would be good. Here's what rewind looks like. Rewind, if we just rewind instead of loop, here's what rewind looks like. Bigger, smaller. Bigger, smaller, that's rewind. So if we want both rewind and loop, loop colon true like that. Uh, now we have rewinding and looping. So there you go. Plus you've got all sorts of things with animate. Animate is uh, very, very powerful. You can wait. So if you wanted to uh, do a rewind wait, you could wait before it rewinds. You can call functions when, uh, when that happens. You can call functions as a loop. You can call functions at the end. You can loop a certain number of times, uh, etc. All right. So there you have some animation going. Uh, why don't I show you where you can see more about animate in a nice, easy manner. If we go to the Zim site under examples, there's a few ways we could get there, but under examples, we have a bunch of Zim examples in here. These are featured examples. Then there's this one called collections and I think animates in there. So collections, uh, 64 Zim bits show you 64 smaller examples of Zim. There they all are. And you can press this little square to see them visually or press off to go back to the words, press the square, see them all visually. There's a sequence animation right there. Wee, nice, huh? So those are Zim bits, 64 of them there. This is a bunch of e-learning examples. Here's the Zim cat feature, Zim 10 feature, Zim 9 Neo features, um, a mini site on beads, mini site on particles, physics, uh, data examples, uh, virtual reality examples, uh, noise examples, which is sort of like an art thing. And there's animation, component examples, accessibility examples, con motion controller examples. 
uh, responsive design with guides and grids and layouts examples and some parallax ones. So right here is uh, animation, clink. And it's a, a little page that shows a variety of different animations. Here's an absolute position animation where we say animate to an X property of 230. That's absolute. Here's relative where we start at 45 degrees and we rotate quote 360. So that will change the rotation 360 from its current rotation. And we give it time and we're looping and there's an ease. Often when we rotate and we want it to just to spin like a wheel and keep going, we want a linear ease. These other ones default to a quad ease in and out. So that's uh, an ease is the uh, equation that is used as it heads towards the end. Uh, so we can maybe show you a little bit about that if you want. And then we'll probably call it a day for this um, Zim Basics. We can also ease from a certain amount, or not ease, but animate from. Here's a, an animation series. This one is a series where we put a bunch of animations all within an array and then it will animate in that series. Here we're animating from a certain value, and that can be handy. Uh, there's this animate constant too, and it's a little bit advanced, but anyway, you can turn off all animations by saying animate equals false. And if you're using froms, that allows you, as you're making an animated intro, for instance, and now you're coding and you wanna finish your app, but you don't want to keep on running the animated intro. You can say animate equals false, and it will just bypass the whole animated intro and start you off in the right place. That is if you animate from. So they kind of go hand in hand there. Here's a wait. So it's waiting and then waiting on the other side. So there's the loop wait and the rewind wait. You can also wait just to start. And then this one is an animated sequence, which is going So you just, um, uh, we're animating through a bunch of rectangles that are probably made with a tile. So we tiled a bunch of rectangles and then we're animating their scale Y, only the scale in the Y direction to make this sort of uh, bar situation. And we say sequence point two. So every point two seconds, it will then run the next one. Isn't that amazing? We can also pause uh, animations and stop animations. Uh, after, they, after they started, we can animate along a path and set it to drag along a path. There's Zim Neo does all these magical animations. Why don't I show you that quickly? So here's Zim and under examples. Again, that would be under the collections. Collections, Neo right here. This is when we introduced animating on a path. So there go a bunch of little balls animating on a path. These are examples, hey, go, and there it is animating on a path. And you've seen this before, but the path can actually be changed like that. And off it animates on that and stop animating. You can orient along a, uh, orient along a path. So I'm gonna hit go and all those things are pointing. You see this little ball that's moving around? All of those point towards a little ball. Or you can orient so that they go orient along the path, but that's kind of exciting. Um, you can flip things on a path. So as I animate, you see going from corner to corner, it's flipping. And then here it is up and down. It kind of flips as I go up and down, looking down, looking up, <laughs> looking down, looking up. That's a bit silly, isn't it? Uh, so there's a whole bunch of examples on here. You can dynamically change the speed of an animation. So now it's going really fast. Now it's even going in reverse. And now it's hardly going at all, or if it's actually stopped. Not sure what this one was doing. Oh, it's, uh, it's a long animation, and I'm controlling it based on where my, um, where my mouse is on the screen. We're uh, scrubbing, in a sense, scrubbing that animation. This is pretty amazing. That box just, now it's come through the cloud. Now it's gone behind the cloud. 
and it takes longer to go as it's farther away and it gets faster as it comes closer. It also gets bigger and as it gets farther away, it fades out. So let's show you the path that that's on. There's the path and if we wanted to, we can change the path as well, like that. So there it goes and that's changing its layer as it goes farther and so it's quite um, advanced Zim animation as a matter of fact it may be the most advanced animation around <laughs> you can animate on animated properties so animate on properties that are animating themselves it's like wow my goodness how, how could you get more than that here is industry leading dragging on a path we don't even see the path here but I'm picking that up and dragging it on a path. There's the path. This path may or may not be editable by a person, and it gets smaller as it goes up and bigger as it comes down. Neat, huh? There we are pausing the animation, and we can still drag it if we want. And what's the last one? It's parallax. So uh, we're doing parallax here and a variety of things. There, there's a little path there. And we're making that path. You see how he's animating. As I go up and down, look at that. He's, he's spinning around that tree. So it's changing the depth as it goes to spin around that tree. There's also something going on with percent completes and zooms and, and <laughs> other stuff there. Anyway, that's Zim Neo. And since that time, we added even more features and more power to animation with respect to animating on paths. Uh, easier to use percent completes and animating from one place to another, one percent complete to another percent complete on squiggles or blobs, etc. So that's cool. And where are we at now? We talked, we looked at a little bit about animation and you saw where we can see, find out more about animation. Hmm. One thing, if you're animating something as you're dragging it, uh, it may stop the animation. So you see how we're dragging this circle? Let's do the same thing with the rectangle and turn it on to drag. So dot drag and see where we're at on that. I can't quite remember. So now I pick this up. Oh, it's stopped. So you see how as I'm dragging this, the animation stopped? Let's try again. I pick it up and the animation stops. What you would do is say drag, allow, mm, tweens, colon true, I think it is. And we refresh here. Nope, allow, we'll have to look it up. It's a parameter of drag. And go to the docs, zim docs, and look up drag, drag. It's drag all. Be careful, that's drag all. So I hit go and it goes to the next one. Here it is, drag. Oh, remove tweens. <laughs> okay, so rather than the positive, oh darn, usually we like to choose the positive. Um, allow tweens, true, and make that true. Probably should rename that to be it. But anyway, remove tweens, false is what we want there. So remove tweens, false. And we refresh here, and as I pick this up, it now continues to animate. Uh, quite odd. The, the reason we did that is a lot of times things were animating two locations, and then you go to pick it up to drag it, and it starts to jostle back and forth between where it wants to animate to and where you're trying to move it to. And people who were beginning to code didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> So we defaulted it to automatically pause the animations if we're dragging it. Uh, but like I said, there, there's the solution if you don't want that to happen. Also note that this is now up on top. And if I pick up the circle, it the circle is now on top. So whatever gets picked up is what's going to be on top. And if you don't want that to happen, then you can say on top. You can spell it colon false comma. So do we want what we're dragging to come up on top? By default, that will be true. So if we set it to false, what happens is this. There's the circle on top. And if I pick up, <laughs> if I pick up this thing, it's not coming up on top. It's, it's in behind there. Circle is always on top. 
with respect to on top and on the bottom and we'll call we'll we'll leave it at that this will be the last thing we'll take a look at is layers so the stage is like a container it is well it is a container it's the base container that everything's held in that's the stage and that's this sort of blue area that we've got here uh, we'll probably take a look at containers soon, maybe in the next uh, basics. That might be something to look forward to. Uh, but even here on the stage, we have layers. And, and in another container, a container has its own layers. And containers can be put in containers, and they can have their own layers. So whatever gets added to the stage last, or a container last, will be on top. That's sort of how it works. So we made, over here, a circle. That's going to be on the bottom. <laughs> oh, right, but when we drag it, it comes up on top. So we, we haven't added the um, on top colon false to the circle. So it starts off. Oh, we can't quite tell, but that circle's actually behind this. Oh, we can't tell. Circle's behind that, and if I pick it up, then the circle comes up on top. Anyway, uh, in terms of layers, if we wanted to switch it around so that... Um, well, I, it's kind of confusing because we've got the on tops on one and not on another. I don't know which way to demonstrate this. <laughs> uh, let's turn off the on top up here. And if we do it, we can practice our Zimduo technique. Because on top is a parameter of drag, but it's far away. So you can't do it this way. This parameter is the boundary. That's the first parameter. You can't just say comma, squiggly brackets, on top, colon, false. Because that's a combination. Then, then we've got a normal parameter, comma, and then the Zimduo technique of the object literal. You can't do that. So in other words, we have to put this also into here. We can do it like that. We put the squiggly bracket on the front here, and we say boundary colon. So there's, uh, we'd be fine leaving it here on all one line, but often I like to break this down into multiple lines. <clears throat> you can also comment those out if you want. So now that they're on multiple lines, if we wanted to, we can say, no, not that one. And then this one would still work. Cool, huh? So here we've got drag, and we've said that the boundary is this boundary, and on top, colon, false. So now the circle won't come up on top when we drag it. And we refresh here. I pick that up. I pick up the circle. The circle, as you can see, being the first thing made, is at the bottom. It's even underneath that Z, where the Z was made, the Zim logo was made second. So the circle's made first. It goes on the bottom, then the Z, and then this thing comes up on the top. Well, what if we didn't like it like that? What if we wanted the purple thing to be on the bottom? Well, we could make the purple thing first, so we could cop, uh, cut all this code and put it up above. So if we cut it all from here and built it first before the circle, then the rectangle is going to be at the bottom. We pick that up, and as you can see, the rectangle is behind everything because it's the first thing that got put there. But we don't have to do it that way because we have tools that let us change the layers. So if we put this uh, back down to the bottom here, we're back to the rectangle being on top. So the rectangle's on top of both of those. But if we say dot bot, then that builds it and puts it at the bottom. So that's one way to do it. Refresh here. Hey, the rectangle's been put at the bottom. Okay, it's one way. The other way is, uh, instead of a dot bot, as we add it, center reg is what's adding it to the stage. It puts the registration point in the center, so it animates uh, about its center, and it automatically adds it to the stage, like that. The next parameter is what index? Zero. So if we say, yeah, please put it at the stage, or we could pass in null there, because that's the default. But if we're going to put something there, we may as well put the stage. So that center regs it at the stage at level zero. And we go, we go like that, refresh, and indeed it's at level zero. Where would it be if we said at level one? 
Well, we refresh. Hmm. So it's above the circle now. Now the circle is at level zero, but it's still below the icon. So that actually insert it between these two things. Another way we could do that is it's the last one made. The rectangle is the last one made. Here's the icon and there's the circle. So if we refresh, it goes circle, then the icon, and then the, um, uh, the, the square. What if we wanted to just move this back one layer? Now, we don't really care which layer that is. We don't know which layer it is. We just want to move it back one layer. We can add it. That will add it on top. And then we can say dot ord for order minus one. And if we say ord minus one, it's like a relative movement uh, of the layers. It will put it back one layer. So we refresh here. It's still on top of the circle, but it's behind the icon. If we wanted to make it behind the circle, we could say ord minus two. Now it's behind the circle and the icon. It went back to. Easier way to do that would say dot bot though. There's also a dot top. So uh, at the moment, the circle's underneath that as we drag it over there. But if we said circle, do we have access to the circle? No. So const circle is equal to, if we say circle dot uh, top, that will move the circle to the top now. So the circle is above everything. You can't put circle dot top right on the circle here. <coughs> dot top. That would, at this moment, make it on the top. <laughs> it's the only thing there. So we didn't have it here. You can't put it up there. It will still be on the bottom. Well, it's on the bottom of that one. It's above this one because we ordered this one to the bottom. <laughs> anyway, if we, if we didn't order it, you will find that that didn't work. It will still bring that up to the... Uh, It'll, everything else will still be on top of it. Okay, so that was uh, dot .ord for order. It's relative ordering, dot .top and dot .bottom. Or as you make the things, you can specify usually as the parameter, I think always as the parameter after which container we're adding this to. There's a dot .add to, there's a dot .loc, there's a dot .pose, there's a dot .center, there's a dot .center reg. Those are the ways we add things with chainable ways that we add things to the stage. If you're coming from CreateJS, they have add child. We don't do it that way. That way it doesn't chain. It's the reverse way. It's sort of like container dot add child um, child. And you'll see that we can't chain from there. So we flipped it and all of the things that we use to add, whether it be center, center, reg, loc, pose, or add to, they all um, are chainable. Yay! Yay, Zim! Yay, Zim Basics! So, <laughs> this darn this darn thing, I wish I could drag that and have it stop. Huh? You know, I'll make it smaller. It's, it's distracting. Uh, but you saw a bit of animation today. That's great. We talked about the configuration objects. Hey, that's fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing more basics and just talking with you in the next one. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day. Come and join us, please. Please do. If you, if you made it this far, you certainly must come join us at Slack or on Discord. We'd love to see you there. Ciao.